This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by the National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters. Joining NACA will provide you with the resources you need to build a lasting career as a claims professional at adjustertv.com slash NACA. Okay, should you work W-2? The real question is, is do you want to work, right? If the only opportunity that you have is to do W-2 work where they take ta taxes out and FICA and all this kind of stuff, right? And you can't take as many deductions or any deductions because of the way the tax laws are, right? So what, right? What difference does it make? It's I, honestly, there's only so many deductions that you can take as an adjuster, and there's a, there's a, a point of diminishing returns on those, right? If you stay out the whole year, 365 days, and you're paying for a hotel that whole time, and you know you're you're deducting your mileage that whole time, those are really the main expenses that you can take, right? There's only that's that's it, right? You can't in a year you're not going to be you're not going to have 465 days worth of hotels, you're only gonna have 365. And if the, the more efficient you are doing your claims, whether you're W-2 or 1099, um, if you're closing more claims than everybody else is, then your, your expenses are gonna be a smaller percentage of your overall, basically your revenue, right, over the year, right? And that's what you get taxed on is that revenue. Um, I don't see that there's any drawback to doing W-2 because, and here's why. And really, it comes down to if you exclude doing W-2 work um, because you saw on social media or because you don't think that it's, it's from a tax perspective, it's as lucrative as being a 1099 adjuster, um, then uh, you're excluding work, right? You're saying, basically, I don't want X percentage. There are some companies that only pay W-2. State Farm, I'm pretty sure, you know, no matter what IA firm you're working for them through, they have to pay you w, as a W-2 person because they have they have pretty strict oversight and management of the independent adjusters, right? So they, I think they're required to do that. Um, so you're missing out on that, right? You're, and if that's the only gig that there is and you turn it down because you're like, I don't want to do W-2, I want to wait for 1099, and that was it, no 1099 gigs popped up, then you're not, you're getting zero, right? So why would you turn down work uh, in order to somehow, something to do with your taxes? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, what really matters is the average take home on, that you get on each claim, and you really don't have a whole lot of control over that, especially as a, well, really as any kind of an adjuster where you're either a cap property or you're a daily property adjuster, because the claim is what it is, right? And if you're doing fee schedule, it's gonna be, they're gonna be what they are, right? And that you don't have any control over the kinds of claims that you get. Unless you're like a high level adjuster and you are, uh, have been doing this for 25 years and you have, um, so much experience that you can say, I'm only gonna do large loss commercial, period. That's it, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm your guy for large loss, large loss commercial. I have a lot of experience with it. I'm an expert at it. I'm a great customer service. I'm always on time. I, you know, under promise and over deliver, all that kind of stuff, right? And my files are always in line with contractors. And if the contractors are out of line, then I negotiate and there's no big fights and it's, you know, we figure it out, right? You're a professional. Um, as a new person, as a person with one or two years of experience, I'm going to tell you, in, in all these situations, I don't care if they're paying hourly, uh, they're paying T&E, they're paying uh, or, uh, fee schedule, or uh, day rate, doesn't matter. If they call and they say, hey, you want to go work, I'm going to work, if I'm you, right? Because you want to get some, you want to start getting experience more than tweaking a knob and, and gaining a percentage here and there on your taxes, right? I think that that's, it's the wrong priority, in my opinion, as a new person, right? As you gain experience, that's a little bit different. Um, you can start to see, see that I don't really like working for this firm. You know, I've, I've run a couple storms with those guys. We didn't really click very well. We didn't mesh. Um, I found that their, their attitude was rough or whatever, right? I didn't like their bedside manner with, that they had with me as the adjuster, but I really liked working for these guys. So, you know, I've been an adjuster now for three years. I'm really gonna try to, to um, really, really work on my relationship with this particular IA firm who has these two or three carriers that I really like to work for and really just double down on that, right? You have the option to do that. And in, in that relationship, you may be able to say, hey, listen, you know, I, I'm, uh, you know, 
starting to, to earn a lot of money doing this, and my CPA has advised me to become an LLC and to, and to do 1099 at whatever possible, what opportunities do you have for in, in those places? And you can start to have conversations with the people at these companies because they're, you know, your managers and the dispatchers and sort of the, the people that, that run the operations people, right? They get, they get to know the adjusters and you can have these conversations with them and ask them and say, hey, listen, is there any benefit to doing this over that? Should I not work W-2 or should I work W-2? Um, what are the benefits? What do you see? You know, is there more W-2 work than, or is there more 1099, right? You can start to have these conversations. But in the beginning, I'm going to tell you, um, do not turn down any work of any kind, period. Even if you're like, I want to do just only remote because you just, sounds cool, right? You want to go to be able to go to the park for lunch, you know, go sit in the coffee shop with your, having your music in and put your feet up and, you know, clickety clack on your keyboard on your, your, your laptop. They say, hey, um, we have an opportunity five states away to do a hail event or as a sewer and drain backup storm. Um, we're, we're desperate for field adjusters. You want to go. Um, I'm not saying no to that, right? If I'm you, even if I want to ultimately be a desk, a remote desk adjuster, I'm not going to turn down anything, right? I'm just going to say yes. Um, later on, you know, you're not going to say yes forever. Later on, you can be to the point to where, you know, uh, you're able to turn down work or to, 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 um, state your preferences, right? Because you can't really do that in the beginning. And I, and I don't think it's fair to anybody, but particularly yourself, because you limit your opportunities if you say, I don't want to do that because, you know, I, I, I don't think that I'm going to make as much money or for tax purposes or whatever. I can't deduct anything as a W-2 or whatever it is, right? It's missing the point. Again, like I said at the beginning, um, your priority should be working and learning how to do claims, and learning how to be an adjuster, learn how to manage your time, learn how to manage being on the road, right, or, or whatever it is that they have you doing, um, and learning how to, to be a claims professional, and then the money is going to come, right? Because you're not going to get to the good money without having experience, and you, so you got to get that experience first, and that means saying yes, right? So forget about the W-2 thing, 1099, it's a... It's, uh, it's a little bit of a red herring. Your priority should be saying yes and getting out there and working and getting experience. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at adjustertvplus.com.